All right, this is a demonstration of full vital signs, uh, which you're going to take on every single patient you have. Uh, your full vital signs are going to include blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, lung sounds, skin signs, SAT, blood gl glucose level, pupils, and that's your full set of vitals. All right, this is a demonstration on how to take a blood pressure on a patient. Uh, for your blood pressure, you're going to have two numbers which you are going to record. You're going to record your systolic number, which is going to be your higher number, and your diastolic number, which is your lower number. So the equipment you're going to need is your blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. What you're going to do, first of all, test your stethoscope. Make sure it's working. If it is, you can then set that to the side. Then for your blood pressure cuff, you'll have your dial and then you'll be to have two markings on the cuff. One will say left arm, one will say right arm. And you want to line that up with the patient's right arm or left arm artery. So I'm going to line it up, place it in the right place, tighten, and then I like to place the flap right behind it so that way you can read my dial. At this point, you're going to push the scope in your ears, check, make sure it's still working. You're going to place your stethoscope right underneath the cuff, hold it in place, and you're going to pump your blood pressure cuff up to around 180 to 200, depending on your patient. When I'm taking this, I'm going to release slowly and release and listen. I'm going to listen for the first heartbeat I hear and then the last time I hear it. Alright, so in this example, I heard 118 over 82, so 118 would be my systolic number, and then 82 would be my diastolic number. Now, another method you can use for taking um, blood pressure is you can do what's called a palpated BP. So, uh, for a palpated BP, you're going to just take the radial artery, you're going to feel for a pulse. Once you've located that, you're going to then apply your blood pressure cuff again, same position. Hold it back and position it. It's important to note that when you're taking a palpated blood pressure, you are only going to hear a systolic, or you're only going to feel a systolic number because you're not using a stethoscope. So once again, I'm going to pump up my blood pressure cuff all the way up. At that point, I'm going to release and feel for the systolic number. So again, I got one. And that is a demonstration on how to do blood pressure. All right, this is a demonstration on how you can obtain a heart rate on a patient. So uh, there are several places you can obtain a heart rate. You can either go for the carotid artery, which is going to be on the neck. So you're right here, you can use two fingers, and you're going to feel for a pulse. And then uh, it's important to note that when you're doing this, you want to take it um, on the side of the patient so you're not um, reaching across them. Uh, you can also take on the brachial, which is going to be on the arm, so I can feel on the inside of the arm. This is going to be ideal for pediatric patients, so you want to make sure you um, do that rather than carotid for them, or brachial. Um, when taking uh, the radial, you want to either use a wrist that does not have any jewelry on it, and you just feel for the thumb. I like to follow the thumb down, feel, and it should be right about here. You'll feel for heart rate and record. Uh, you can also get the femoral, which is on the inside of the leg, and then a pedal pulse, which is going to be down uh, in line with their foot. And those are the main places you're going to be taking uh, heart rate. You can take it in other locations, but those are going to be the main ones you use in EMS. Alright, this is a demonstration of obtaining a respiratory rate. So you can either obtain a respiratory rate through actually palpating for respiratory rate, which you're going to do either by placing your hand on the patient's back or the patient's chest. Uh, you're just going to record for either 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, just make sure you get your respiratory rate for a full minute either way. Um, an additional way you can do it is you can visualize. So you can watch the pa patient breathing in and out and record each time they breathe in. Um, and once again, record for 30 seconds to a minute. You can also use your stethoscope and listen for every time they breathe in and breathe out and
All right, this is going to be a demonstration of lung sounds on a patient. So uh, it's important to know when you're taking lung sounds on a patient, you're going to take six in the front and six in the back at the very least. Uh, you can also take lung sounds on the neck, uh, anywhere airway is. Push your stethoscope in, make sure you test it. I'm going to take one here, listen for breath sounds, and tell the patient to breathe in and breathe out. I'm going to check on the side, one side. I'm going to come around, check at the top, on the side, on the side. Then for the back, what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to take one up here, avoiding the scapula, telling the patient to breathe in and breathe out. Over here, over here, over here, over here, and over here. Now it's important to note when you're doing this, you are listening for any respiratory compromise. So if you hear any crackles, wheezing, um, anything like fluids that might be in the lungs, uh, that would be considered abnormal. And you want to make sure you record those findings and if necessary, take additional lung sounds to determine uh, if it is upper or lower respiratory.